everyone, it's Christian Fuchs here. I would like to say a big thank you to our fans and keep having our back for the upcoming Premier League season as well as the Europa League. Keep watching Leicester Fan TV. They have the latest news and they keep you up to date on LeicesterFanTV.com. So stay tuned and thanks for your support. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Leicester Fan TV for tonight's Friday Night Fan Zone show. Um, today's a special one. We've got a we've got a very good guest here tonight, Josh. Uh, a lot of people will know who it is because I haven't stopped tweeting about it. I've been that excited. Um, but just just in case anyone has missed it, um, today we have a former professional footballer on with us, uh, a former Leicester City midfielder. Um, he's made he made 42 appearances for Leicester and uh, and 29 as what 29 times in the Championship winning season. Um, and he also played 90 minutes in one game that I can't wait to ask him about, which, of course, was the Manchester United game. Uh, without further ado, let's get him added in straight away. It is Mr. Dean Hammond. Hello, Dean. How are you, mate? I'm very well. How are you guys? All right. Yeah, good. Very, very good. Thank you, mate. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, we've had ex-professional ex, uh, footballers on, on our shows before. Um, normally, they're from before mine and Josh's time. Um, but it's great to get someone on who, uh, who, you know, we, I'm sure everyone watching is familiar with. Um, so Dean, I mean, let's, let, let's start off with, um, let's do it in chronological order. I want to start with obviously when you joined Leicester, you joined Leicester in 2013, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe that was just after the, the Watford game, you know, obviously when Leicester got knocked out in that in that semi-final um, playoff leg. Um, I wanted to ask you, really, I mean, was there a, a kind of um, sense of, of it, it within the camp that we would be going up that year? Um, did, did the players really believe that they could do it, you know, second time trying? Yeah, 100%. Um, when I joined the club, um, I think I joined in, September sort of time. So late on in the window, the season had already started. The team had started the season very, very well. Um, and there was a sense of the, of the fact that we were going to go for promotion. Um, the squad within the dressing room was fantastic. You know, a young, hungry squad that unfortunately missed out on the playoffs the, the season before. Um, and, and Nigel had brought a couple of experienced players in, in myself, Gary Tadda Fletcher. Um, just to help that dressing room, just to bring a little bit more experience to that dressing room, um, because it was very, very talented, um, as we've seen from the players and, the, and what careers they turned out to have. So, yes, it was definitely go for promotion. There was, there was no real pressure, I don't think, but there was a there was an expectation between us as a group to to push on to the next step, to to, to gain that promotion, to get back to the Premier League. And um, Nigel was brilliant at that. He sold that. Uh, vision to me when I signed for the football club and um, yeah just a, a fantastic season yeah I mean obviously you mentioned Nigel there Josh I think you had a, a question um, for Dean <laughs> yeah yeah just based on Nigel Pearson um, what what was he like as a manager in the group and also what, what was he like as a character as well at the same time just now as a manager in uh, well I really really enjoyed working under Nigel um, Brilliant guy, really, really, first of all, as a human being, he's fantastic. He really, really is. Um, as a manager, his man management skills were, were great. Um, probably the best I experienced in my career. Um, he was very, very honest. Um, you knew where you stood with Nigel. Um, he was a very, very good coach as well. Didn't take a lot of training, but when he did, he did a lot of the team shape, a lot of the 11 v 11, a lot of the, the prep before the game. And that was very, very good. The detail was good. Um, and I really enjoyed working under Nigel. Like I said, he was very approachable. He was honest with you. He'd have a chat, um, but he had a presence as well, which was good. As a manager, he had a real presence. You know, if he walked in the room, there wasn't a fear, but if he walked in the room, you knew Nigel had walked in. So the atmosphere kind of changed a bit. And there was a lot of respect yeah. from the players and, from, and, from, and everyone around the club for him because, one, he was doing a fantastic job. Um, the club were heading in the right direction. And like I mentioned to start with, he was just a, a really good human being. So, yeah, I love working under Nigel. And I'd probably say, you know, I was lucky to work under a lot of good managers and coaches in my career, but I'd say he was the best. Yeah, I mean, Andy says there, you would want Nigel by your side in the trenches. Uh, <laughs> as well as, but there. I mean, I, I forgot to ask as well, Dean, we, we like to ask this to, to former Leicester players. I mean, 
what what did Nigel say to you, you know, which kind of convinced you to come to the club in, in 2013? Well, do you know what? Um, I was at Southampton at the time and Nigel had obviously been at Southampton. So mm. when I knew of the interest, um, I asked people at the football club. Um, I'd not really come across Nigel much, uh, much, played against a few of his teams, but personally not come across him. But people spoke so highly of him at Southampton in terms of his manner. Um, his values and him as a manager um, so that helped to start with and then when I spoke to Nigel he just sold with a vision of the of the football club and where it was heading and we were going to try and get to the Premier League and at, at that point you know I'd achieved promotion with Southampton to the Premier League but I'd not actually played in the Premier League so it was something I was personally still try, striving for yeah. and he sold that to me you know he was very honest with me this is what I mean when he when he he sold the role that I was going to play at the football club. You know, he didn't say I was going to come in and play every game. I was going to start. He was like, I want to bring you in for experience. I want to bring you in for your know-how. Um, I want to bring you in for that, that, like I said, a little bit more experience in midfield and, and play a kind of different role on the on the pitch and off the pitch. So just his honesty. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't take very long to persuade me, I must admit. Yeah. I mean, Jack, um, Jack's asked here, um, and is it the one goal for Leicester, Dean? Is that right? The one yeah. goal? Uh, Jack's mentioned it. Do you remember the goal he scored at the DW Stadium for Leicester in the championship winning season in the 1-0 win? I mean, I didn't. I, I forgot that it was a 1-0 win, Dean. So, obviously, that's a big goal, isn't it? I think that's a, that's a different game. I, the, the game oh, I okay. scored in was a 2-2 a draw. A away. Two -two. Yeah, so it was a header. But it's not a bad ratio. I think I had one shot for Leicester and scored one goal. So, it, it's not too bad. So, uh <laughs> No, yeah, it's always nice to obviously score goals, but, you know, that wasn't a major part of my game at that stage in my career. More the holding midfield player, more done uh, the basics, um, you know, broke play up, intercepted the ball, give the ball to the better player, just get it very, very simple. So, but lovely to score, to score a goal. And um, I think it was quite an important goal at the time, actually. It was a 2-2 yeah. draw and it kept the unbeaten run going in the championship. So, yeah, fantastic. Yes. Yeah, uh, and there's a question here from Jamie. Um he said, um, can you ask Dean, what was it like working with, with Kun Vishai? Obviously, you are one of the, the people that obviously, you know, got to meet him and, and what a, a privilege that must have been. What what was he like? What was he like? Yeah, fantastic. As, as, as an owner, um, you couldn't ask for, for any more. Um, again, just the values of his family, the way he was, was, was fantastic. Um, loved to be involved with the players. Um, made you feel very, very welcome. Um, and the whole family, really, it was just a, a fantastic feel around the football club. They were very, very involved. They were, they're passionate about the football club. They yeah. they love the football club. And and that was a big thing. You don't always get that with owners. And you could yeah. see he was very, very motivated, very driven to to make the club successful in, in the right way. And um, yeah, a lot of his values and um, his good rubbed off on us as, as players, really. So you yeah, had the privilege to get to know him very well. I met him. Um, obviously, he took us away to Thailand to show us his culture as well. Um, no, brilliant, and it was it was a pleasure to know him. Yeah, and and you mentioned there, um, Dean, obviously about how you know you always wanted to play in the Premier League. Um, you wanted to become a Premier League footballer, and I want to ask, obviously, you know, moving on a little bit now, when Leicester won promotion um, back into the Premier League, um, what was the th pre-season? What did what did you know the players think that they could achieve that year? Well, we were, we were, it's a really good question. Um, you know, within the group, there wasn't that much Premier League experience. You had players like Paul Conchessy, obviously David Nugent. Uh, I'm trying to think of other players that potentially played in the Premier League, but there wasn't massive amounts of experience. So yeah. there was a hunger to, to the group to go into that, that season, go into the Premier League to prove ourselves. You've got to think there was players from bigger clubs, for instance, Danny Drinkwater, Matty James, that had not quite had not quite happened at Manchester United for them. So they wanted to prove a point. And I think that really worked for us, to be honest. We started the season really, really well um, with, with some really good results. Um, but yeah, there was there was definitely belief because we performed so well in the Championship. We were so strong. And the mm. one thing we knew that would work in the Premier League, we had pace within the team. And... You know, when you've got pace and you've got creative players, that's going to cause anyone in the world problems. I don't care who you're playing against. And it wasn't just pace, it was raw pace. You know, there yeah. wasn't many teams in the Premier League that could compete um, in terms of that. So, you know, if we added one or two good players to the squad, some again, some more experience, some Premier League experience, 
we knew we'd do well. So there was challenges along the way, but it worked out in the end. Yeah, I mean, obviously you mentioned there, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, um, sometimes you can't handle that that raw pace. And I mean, let's get on to it because there's loads of comments about the game and uh, it was something I definitely wanted to ask you that. You know what it is, the, the 5-3 against <laughs> Manchester United. Am I right in saying you played the full 90 minutes? Yeah, uh, played the yeah. full 90 minutes in that game, yeah. And I think there ended up being like four centre midfielders on the pitch in that game at the end. I'm, I'm sure there was. Um, but yeah, mate, I mean, going into that game, obviously they had, I mean, world-class players. You know, you've got, they had Falcao, Rooney, Di Maria, um, Van Gaal, obviously was the manager with, with Giggs. <laughs> obviously, Leicester now are, are, are kind of known for the Foxes never quit. And I think that epitomised it, that game. What, what was it like playing in that one? Yeah, it was fantastic. I'm not going to lie, and um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was our toughest challenge to to that point in the division um, in that year. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough, like you mentioned, the, the players that had planned that day, um, the attacking threats they had. We we knew we were up against it, and no, it was just a, a fantastic result. The atmosphere was brilliant. I think it was a a Super Sunday game as well. So it was on a Sunday. It was live on Sky, you know, at prime yeah. time. Um, we. Well, let's not say we started slowly. Manchester United started very, very fast and scored two amazing. I mean, Di Maria's goal was, yes. uh, yeah, just a just a joke and just the quality he had. But then, for I think the turning point was us to to, to fire back really, really quickly to get yeah. to make it two one and to go in at half time two one. We knew we still had a chance. Then United scored again to make it three one. And if I'm honest, I probably thought we were beat. Then you know it was going to be a yeah. tough call to come back. And like you say, we, we just never gave up. We never knew we were beat. And Jamie Vardy obviously was fantastic that day. You know, won the penalty to make it 3-2. Esteban scored the equaliser. I still say to this day, I've said it many, many times in interviews, <laughs> that <laughs> the fact that the fact that that was the loudest noise I think I heard in a football stadium. You know, when we made it 3 all, it was even louder than when we won the game. When it went 3 all, because it was almost like a, 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 a surprise, a yeah. relief, everything to... And we all celebrate in the corner. I still see pictures of it now, you know, we're all, and, and then to go on and not just think, well, we've got a point now, you know, let's just hold on. To go on and win the game, um, to Jamie to score, to get the penalty at the end, for Leo to score, to, yeah, fantastic, fantastic day. And one that will always live with me in, in memories. And, you know, I see it now and again on the Premier, Premier League gold or whatever it's called yeah. on Sky Sports. So, yeah, I get to reminisce about it a lot. And and that, and that that obviously that equaliser can be Asu's goal. I mean, obviously every time you watch it, you're there, aren't you? I mean, is that is, was that an assist? Do you reckon an assist? Well, I'm going to try and claim an assist. I did, yeah, I can't. I don't think I was that good a player when I could take a shot thinking I know this is going to bounce off a defender to go to Estevan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had Paul Koncheski coming down the outside of me actually, and I probably should have given him the ball because um, he made a great run. But cut inside, tried to shoot kind of scuffed it a little bit blocked <laughs> but luckily Festo fell to Esteban and you know a great strike from him and yeah the feeling then was yeah. was amazing I think that's the best like I've, I've been promoted many a time I've won I've played at Wembley I've played in some big big games very fortunate to do that um but that was a special moment just to you know playing in the Premier League we're not playing Manchester United in the FA Cup we're playing yeah. in the Premier League it's a proper football match and we've just equalised to make it free all. Uh, yeah, pretty special. I was, I mean, I was going to save this question for later, but I may as well say it now. Is that your your best game, your favourite game for Leicester? I think it has to be. It's my most memorable game. Um, yeah. I'd have to say making my Premier League debut against Everton was pretty special as well because it had been a, a career aim of mine, a career goal yeah. to play in the Premier League. So that was very, very special. Um, but yeah, the most memorable game. If I was going to talk to anyone about any Leicester game I played... I'd have to say uh, the Manchester United game. The promotion year was fantastic, if I'm honest. It was that was one of the best seasons I had in my career. But a single individual moment or a single individual game, I'd have to say the Manchester United game. Yeah, um, Gray's got a question here. Uh, he said, um, "Dino, who was your roomie on away days?" Well, it was a mixture because with Leicester, you were allowed to, if you wanted to, room on your own. So, oh, okay. for many different reasons, people would do that. You know, go to bed at different times if you've got kids at home you're not sleeping that well you want to get your head down early yeah. but I used to room with Gary Taylor Fletcher so me and Fletch <laughs> used to room together we used to spend a lot of time together um probably too much time to be honest where we uh 
sat next to each other in a dressing room. We had a, I had a flat in Leicester. He had a flat in Leicester, which were next door to each other. We roomed together. Uh, so I roomed with Fletch and, and that was fine. You know, it was, it was good fun. It's good company, Fletch. He had some good yeah. stories. He was, uh, yeah, good, same sense of humour. Um, yeah, it was, it was good fun with Fletch. Um, just moving on as well now, Dean. I mean, um, in the, the next season, the, the title winning season, am I right? You, you were on loan at Sheffield United, is that right? During that title winning season, yeah. So I started the season um, at Leicester, uh, done yeah. pre season, uh, was on the bench for the first two games against uh, Sunderland and West Ham, I think it was. Um, so I was within the plans, and then um, I think Gok Ingla came in, um, yes. uh, Kante came in so you know let's be honest i was up against danny king matty james danny drinkwater kante and gok Ingler, which the club had paid a lot a lot of money for him i know it didn't quite work out for him that i think how it was planned so just had an honest conversation with the club and the manager and, and you know i wasn't probably going to play as much as i'd liked um and i had the opportunity to go to sheffield so I took that opportunity. Um, that didn't quite work out. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'd wish I'd stayed, but there we go. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm guessing, obviously, you were still within, you know, con having contact with the players um, yeah. during that season. Um, from, from, I don't want to say an outsider, because obviously you were still, you yeah. know, on the books at the club, but, you know, with not being there all the time, what, what, was, what was it like for them, just from what you've spoken to them about? You know what I mean? Well, one, fantastic. Um, two, I don't think it came as a, such a huge surprise to the players as it may be people from the outside because you've got to remember the way we finished the season before. Yeah. We won, what did we win? Eight out of nine, something like that. Eight out yeah. of ten um, in the last ten games. So we were in championship form then, really. Yeah. Um, but the boys were buzzing, you know. And But that was, that was one of the special things about the group. You know, they, they're, very, they're very humble it's a great, really tight knit group. Yeah, um, they would have taken each game at a time, and there was no pressure on them. You know, there was no expectation. They were flying high at the top of the league. All the clubs around them had that expectation. So, yeah, the boys are buzzing. Training was always good. The dressing room was always good, anyway. But I can only imagine what it was like on a day to day basis. So, I mean, I would have loved to have been a part of it. Fantastic experience, but you know, they deserve every second of that. The players. Yeah, and. Um... Just, just before we move on um, to to other things, since you know uh, the the playing days for last, I wanted to ask. Obviously, uh, we've now left Beaver Drive, uh, the training ground, obviously into this amazing complex in in Seagrave. Um, best memory at Beaver Drive? Can you give us that your best memory? <laughs> oh, best memory. Um... One you're allowed to say. <laughs> yeah, one I'm allowed to say. Um, I don't know if I can give you a best memory. I think. A great memory was um, the day we got bought, a day where we got promoted. I think we were promoted at Bolton, but the next couple of days when we came in and, um, yeah, just the atmosphere around the football club and um, celebrating, you know, we had all the media in, there was photographs. Yeah. That that was pretty special. The day, the, the season we stayed up, um, I remember um having a night out after that and then coming in the next day with all the lads and just sitting in the dressing room and kind of in a little bit of not shock but a little bit of just kind of you know one of those moments where you all sit there and have a chat and have a smile on your face thinking we've just pulled off something fantastic here that was a good memory but i'd have to say and this is not just me i loved every day going in there the the training ground was was tight-knit it was quite a small complex but I love that. You know, everyone at the club was together. Yeah. You'd bump into everyone, the youth team, the 23s, the dinner the dinner ladies, the, the the laundry ladies, the recruitment. Everyone was together. So it was it was really, really good fun. I it was just a great I had what, two full seasons there. It couldn't have gone any better, to be honest. It was just it was brilliant. Yeah, and um uh, and moving on a little bit, Dean. Um correct me if I'm if I'm if I'm making this up, please correct me. Um 2018, um, I, I heard was it you were in a, in a role at the club, loans loans manager. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Um, can you yeah. tell us a bit about that role and, and what it entails? Well, it's a brilliant role to start with, and I think it's going to become a really really important role at football clubs. Um, and Leicester were one of the first people to do it. Basically, what happened? I finished at, uh, my contract at Leicester. Um, I took eight to nine months out of the game. I just had a, my third child, so I took some time with the family. Um, could have continued playing, but didn't. 
And then uh, Steve Biggenhole at Leicester rang me up and said, look, would you come in and do a bit of mentoring with the 23s? They were struggling near the bottom of the league in the 23 league. I said, of course, I'll come in and speak to the players. He said, would you? and then it turned in, will we actually do some training? So I said, look, okay, I'll train. I'm still fit. Got myself fit. Next question was, will, will you play some games? I was like, so I played some games. We ended up staying up that year, um, which was brilliant. On the last day of the season, we actually played the last game at White Hart Lane. And that was the last ever official game at, at White Hart Lane where we beat Tottenham 4-0, I think, to stay up. Um, and then after that summer, they asked me to be loans manager. They asked me, said, look, we're gonna, we'd like someone to come in with a connection with the football club who's got some experience, who's respected by the younger players. Um, and the role entails of you have contact with the players who go on loan. Uh, you help them find the most appropriate club with Leicester as well. And then you go and watch them play. You go and watch them train. Um, I'll clip up them games and give them advice so I can send it across on a hard drive. They can watch it. Um, and then we can have a chat on the phone and discuss their performances. I'll speak to the, the manager they're on loan with. Um, so, yeah, and I had, the, you know, I had, I had Harvey Barnes at West Brom and that season he played at West Brom. I was looking after Harvey and, you know, that was fantastic watching him play most weeks, because which was really, really good. So really, really important role. And um, yeah. a lot of football clubs are doing now, but Leicester were one of the first. Yep, and uh, no, absolutely brilliant. I, mean, I think everyone's enjoying, uh, obviously, the stories and, and the info you're giving us on on your playing playing career with us. I mean, I just want to move on now um, to to Dean Hammond Elite Fitness. Um, I, I mean, for the past um, couple of weeks, whilst I've been in contact with you, I've been checking it out, obviously, on Instagram and your website and stuff like that. Can you tell everyone what you know what it is? Well, Dean Hammond Elite Fitness is a fitness platform. It started out as a fitness platform and now that's gone into uh, fitness and football, um, passing on my experiences and my, and my knowledge in football to, to the members. Um, it's basically, the passion comes from uh, when I finished playing football, I got lost for probably eight to nine months when I took that time off I mentioned, didn't really know where I was going, lost my identity. Um, so the purpose of the platform is to help dads, um, reignite their passion in life through football and fitness so you know building a structure building a routine around uh, fitness and then the real life experiences you get in uh, football relate that to real life and putting them them disciplines in place to try and help you and find your find your passion again so you know it's there's a combination of um, fitness workouts um, there's some live chats with myself um, in terms of members can ask me questions um, I do live Q&As with uh, former or current professional footballers to pass on to the members to get advice. Um, there's Q&As with experts from the industry in football and fitness. Um, and there's a there's a giveaway each month, you know, to help people out in this current time. There's a, a memorabilia give, giveaway and um, I'll, I'll announce it live on here. So the first one is going to be um, my uh, one of my championship winning shirts from uh, my Leicester one. Um, so that will be the first one to give away this month and all ever, anyone has to do is is sign up and it's, it's one pound that's all it is one pound for the month you get all access to what i've just spoke about for a month and it's a pound and that pound goes to charity as well so that pound's going to memphis um charity which i'm an ambassador for which i'm very privileged to do that so if anyone wants to know more it's on my instagram page the link's in there or just get in contact with me and i'll be happy to speak to you through it yeah, I mean, Bradley Zay says, I've done some of the workouts. They're not easy, but you feel great afterwards. Um, <laughs> what you mentioned there as well, we'll put the link out on, on the uh, on the video uh, at the end um, so you can click and check it out. You mentioned there, obviously, the money uh, goes to Memphis. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you what's been going on, <laughs> Dean. So uh, every week since the start of the season, we've done something called the Baldy Locks Bet, where... Um, I've said if uh, Jamie You're not going to ask me to shave my hair off, mate. No, no, not you. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I've, I've said if Jamie Vardy scores a hat trick, I'll shave my head off. If we score four goals, I'll shave my head off. Um, and it, nothing was happening. So we decided let's get some donations into Memphis and I'll do it. So no one's seen it yet. So I'll take my hat off now. That's why I don't normally wear a hat. Um, <laughs> it's not completely shaven, but you know, it's, hey, it's not too bad. mate. It's a lot... right, <laughs> you'll, get away, you'll get away with that. I definitely wouldn't get away with a skin. I've had a skin once in my life. And that was when I was 16 when I had an initiation at Brighton when I had to sign for the football Ooh. club. Never again. Well, um, I mean, that's it. We we raised in total, we raised uh, £360 Fantastic. Um, for Memphis UK. Um, we're going to top that up to £400. Um, Brilliant. And Memphis have uh, made me aware, I think it's 20 
families that that money will will help out um, with, with that home support um so guys we'll be putting the the just given page out there as well if anybody wants to donate extra at the end um you know that'd be much appreciated um but yeah i mean dean let's let's finish on this one leicester this season um yeah. obviously amazing again you know we've been in the around the top four now for a couple of years what what are your you know expectations for leicester this year how you know where do you think we could finish oh that's a great question i think the season is a unique season I think, unfortunately, Man City have, have suddenly turned up, which makes it very, very difficult. Yeah. But I think Leicester will be, you know, finishing in top four positions will be fantastic for the football club again. It's a brilliant football club. Could they push for the title? Potentially. I think there'll be a title challenge. Yeah. Will it be difficult? Yes, because I think Man City are really, really flying now. But Leicester have got a brilliant squad of players. They really, really have. They've got a fantastic manager. Um, it's a settled squad with some younger players, some experience. I really like the mix, you know, and the clubs, what are they, third in the Premier League at the moment? Third, yeah. Um, they're in the fifth round of the FA Cup, they're in the last 32 of the Europa Cup. I mean, what a season. It really, really is. And I'd love to see them win some silverware. I really would. Um, and finishing in that top four, I think that would just be a fantastic season. It, it really would. Yeah, and uh, this is to end on because I forgot to ask you earlier. It, it was regarding Jamie Vardy. There's a, a few comments coming in uh, as well about it. Um, the question really is, did you ever sense that he would become what he has? You know, when you were at the club, and I know obviously you were there still in, in the title winning season when, you know, he was on that, um, world, you know, amazing form. But let's say prior to that, you know, in the championship year or the great escape year, did anybody expect it? Did he? I mean, I know he's openly admitted that he never thought he could he could get to that level. Um, it's a great question again, mate. Um, did I expect it to get into the levels that he's got at? You know, he's a world class player now. The accolades he's won and individually and for Leicester. I wouldn't say I'd expect it. Did I know he had it? Did I believe he had it in him? Yes, because I, you know, a fantastic player with great pace. And one thing. Maybe it does get appreciated by the Leicester fans, but maybe from the outside, his finishing skills are unbelievable. And his movement and the way he moves, people always go, oh, well, it's easy to play against Jamie Vardy. Just don't let him run him behind. But it's much more complicated, much more complex than that. And he, he is such a top, top player. So, yes, I really believe he could play in the top level. In the championship, you saw glimpses of that. The partnership he had with David Nugent, I think yeah. they learned, he learned a lot off Nuge. They're really, really close friends as well. Um, so that really, yes. really helped him. Um, but no, he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant player. He really is. And I don't think there's anyone like it, else like him in the world, the way he plays. Um, and, you know, I think he's, he's still getting better. He's still improving. I think he's becoming a better player, sc consistently scoring goals um, and a great guy as well. Like, I'm smiling when I speak about him because he's just a top guy. He really is. He'll do anything for anyone, genuinely yeah. honest. Um, so, yeah, I had the privilege of playing with him. But I... It's hard. It's easy for me to say now, but I thought he would. I thought he would comfortably play in the Premier League easily. Yeah, I mean, there there was a comment earlier saying who was the top joker. I'm guessing he's up there, isn't he? From what At I've Leicester, seen, Leicester, who was yeah. the top joker? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't <laughs> relax around Vards. You couldn't really. Um, but he was just good fun. He just got he's just got loads of energy, loads of energy, um, but really, really really good fun on and off the pitch as well. Uh, but yeah, he was. He was a joke for the dressing room. Brilliant. Well, uh, Dean, look, m massive thank you for, for joining uh, me tonight on here. Um, we really do appreciate it. The comments and, and the people getting the, the thoughts in, um, they've enjoyed it as well. So I want to thank you so much for coming on and hopefully in the future, maybe when we win the title this year or the Europa League, uh, you can come on and, uh, and have a chat with us again, mate. We'd love to. be brilliant. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. I mean, that was that was class. Yeah, what a guy. Um, I mean, the comments coming in um, from everyone. There we go. Top bloke, Dino. I hope you've all enjoyed that. Um, what, what a bloke. And, and what, a, what a great guy. So um, thanks, to, thanks again to Dean for coming on, um, having his say on his time at Leicester. Um, Dean Hammond, Elite Fitness, Memphis as well, Memphis, UK. Um, top quality. Now... We, uh, we are going to end the show with 
getting some fans on as we normally do every week um Josh dropped out. Josh does apologise uh, because uh, his internet went off. It's normally me. Um, but let's get some people in. Let's start with Jack first. Hello, Jack. Trust my memory, innit? I, as, soon, <laughs> as soon as I clicked empty, I knew it was 2-2. I remember King <laughs> scoring as well. The first goal for Leicester to go one nil up. How are you doing, mate? You're all right. Yeah, good. You? Yes, good. Thank you. Let's get in. Uh, let's get Gray in. And let's see what Gray has. To, here he is. Mr. Hello. 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 How you doing, mate? You're right. Yeah, you. Yes, yes. Very good. Thank you. you. You know, before you go live, can you sort of text me or something? You should get a notification, mate. No, I, I don't pay attention to them. <laughs> I'll let you know next time. How are you doing? Okay. Are you all right? Yeah, good, mate. I'm going to say, fair play, locks. Looking good. But there's a couple more mil that can come off that, son. Take it off. Come on. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. This is as short as I could get it, mate. That's all. It's as short as I could get it. Yeah, you left plastic on them clippers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all I'm going to quickly say is we need to get behind the silver fox to blue fox challenge. Oh, Phil. Phil. Yeah. And I reckon... I reckon we'd raise 500 for that on Memphis, but we've got to give Phil a few weeks of letting the fans choose the challenge. This is Leicester Fan TV, yeah? The fans decide what happens. So... I'll have a word. We'll, uh, on the watch along, Gray, on Sunday, put some, put, get those comments flying in and, and I'll make sure they're on screen for him, all right? Oh, they were proper flying in the other day, but anyway. Um, and bef- so- Gray... Quick, quickly as well, mate. Just to end on, yeah. what's your score prediction for the lead, uh, the Leeds game on Sunday, mate? I've gone one-one. One-one. Another one-one. One-one at work. Yeah, <clears throat> one-one. I don't. I can't see many. I can't see many goals from Leicester side of things, but <clears throat> I'd like a cheeky one-nil. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But love to everyone on Leicester fan TV. Cheers, ciao, mate. ciao. <laughs> Adios. 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 <laughs> Top of the morning to you. <laughs> Cheers, Gray, mate. Thank See you. you. Oh, oh dear. Gray. Jamie's um, going to get gimmick infringement now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Ross, mate? Did you enjoy that? Uh, the, the yes, Hammond? I did. Uh, very, very, do you know, top notch to you in at Locks. Bit more, bit more on there. Be Stone Cold oh, Steve Austin next. <laughs> um, it's short as yours, isn't it? Well, no, no, you kidding. It's like massive. I'm I've just realised, Jack, you've got a Turtle Beach headset, haven't you? That you're wearing yeah. at a minute. Yep, I've got one from my PS4. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, top guy, Dean Hammond, lads. Yes. Um, I, to be fair, I don't know why. I don't know why we've never had him on before. Um, I think we have like months ago, oh, right. potentially. But I think you know Phil and Jamie, they're a bit older, you know, than us, and they like the old boys on, don't they? <laughs> um, but I thought, no, I'm having this one. I'm going to get someone in who. You know, we all know. And, uh, yeah, what a guy Dean Hammond was. Um, let's start with you, Ross. Score predictions for this Sunday, mate. Leeds, now it'll be a tough game. Actually, no, now... before we do the score prediction, okay, does Perez start again or is it Nacho? I think Perez. I think, because I think Perez, if Vardy's going to be out for a few more games, I think you can't just keep changing the strikers all the time. I think Perez, give him a cut back, probably one or two more games, and he might bang in a few goals in. Uh, I'm not saying that Vardy will struggle to get back in team because he won't. Or... If Perez starts again up front, maybe he gets that one chance. Because we always say, don't we, Vardy only needs one chance. Yeah. Arsenal, one chance, bang, in the back of the net. Well, header. One chance. All need, that's all he needs. I think that's all That's all he needs. And, I, yeah, Perez, everyone's saying Perez. Yeah, I think 100% Perez. You know, Nacho has had more chances than anything. You know, they might, he's had more chances than when someone's broke, breaking up with someone and they're trying to get back with him. You know, he's, he's had all them chances. And he's not taking that opportunity once out of a blue moon. So I think it's Perez's time, as they yeah. say. But, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I was just going to say, and, and yeah, on that then, the score prediction, what, what are you saying? So Leeds are a good team. I think that their main player is Rafinha, the uh, winger. I think he's, the, in my opinion, he's their best player. Um, you know, not just because he's on the FIFA team, but he actually is a very quality player. Um, very quality Brazilian. But I'm going to say, I think there'll be goals. There'll be loads of goals, I think. I'm going to yep. say 
4 2 Leicester. 4 2 uh, Leicester. Leicester. I think obviously when we beat him back at Ellen Road 4 1, you know, we actually destroyed him. I think this one will be a little bit different. You know, they're, they're, they're a bit strange, Leeds, aren't they? They're a bit strange. But yeah, 4 2. Tier is going to score again. And I think he'll get two this time. Two goals from Tielemans, Madison, and I think Barnes will get one. I think Perez will still, he won't score, but I think he'll have a lot of contribution to the goals as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, one day I'll do the watch along with you one day when I've, uh, when I've not got, um, when I'm not working. When you're not working or cooking or. Well, I have ribs Xbox. earlier. Leicester Food TV, I have ribs earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, over to you, mate. School prediction and first, first goal score as well. I think I went 2 1 last night on the uh, Leeds channel, so I'm going to stick to it. 2 1. Yeah. And first goal scorer? Uh, Barnes. Barnes, Harvey Barnes. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to go. What did I say? I said 2 0, didn't I? Did I? 2 0. 2 0, yeah. On the sky, innit? 2 0. Sky BT. BT, I think, innit? I'm not sure. I'll have to Google it. Is it Sky? I think who who knows who knows it's we'll as long out. as it's not on um BBC I player I'm, I'm not bothered <laughs> um <laughs> um <laughs> yes so uh thank you Jack and Ross for uh for joining getting your predictions in um no thank you to uh to Josh for ditching us halfway through um oh, no it's the internet don't worry Josh um I think he would be more annoyed anyway because oh it is Sky guys I'm wrong um <laughs> Joanne says is that beard coming off for the score Jack <laughs> Will you shave your beard if we win 2-1? Do you know what? Yeah, I need my hair cutting as well. <laughs> so have a look, let's have a look at yours then. Let's have a look it, at your hair then. It might be double trouble, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? My hair's massively long. Um, That's what I keep on 2 doing p.m. That. Sunday, is it? Is it 2 p.m. Sunday? Uh, I think it's yeah, 2 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah 2 not bad. We start at half one on Sunday, yeah. I thought it was another late one. Right, guys, um, thank you for coming on tonight, and uh, we'll see you on, uh, I'm sure, Jamie's uh, Aftermath show, yeah? Jamie's Aftermath, Pre-Math, whatever show it's called these days. <laughs> Perfect. No, yes, I'll, I'll do mine. It's in a bit. In a bit. That's about, that'll <laughs> be mine. <my Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Gray, for the 199, mate. Really appreciate... Oh, come on, hold on. We've got to end with this. Haven't we? There we go. Um, cheers, Gray, for the uh, the 199. But yeah, guys, I mean, what a show that was. Dean Hammond, um, what a guy. Um, top professional as well, I've heard. Um, I want to thank him so much for coming on. Hopefully we'll have him on again in a bit, um, you know, later on in the season, in the summer, something like that. Um, but yeah, as always, thank you all for watching. Um, let's just get these in below. Thanks to our sponsors. ADT, Eat Me. Everard, Moya Wade, Leicester Garage Conversion, Piglet's Pantry, The Fox's Arms, Pink Vehicle Leasing, uh, Hologram, and of course Memphis, uh, who Dean Hammond is the ambassador for, and as well, where the £360 raised for a shaven head all is going to. So thanks to everyone for watching, and uh, and yeah, as always, come on, you foxes. Everyone, it's Christian Fuchs here. I would like to say a big thank you to our fans and keep having our back for the upcoming Premier League season as well as the Europa League. Keep watching Leicester Fan TV. They have the latest news and they keep you up to date on LeicesterFanTV.com. So stay tuned and thanks for your support.